Hi viewers, this video is on Anglo-Saxon or Old English Literature. Old English Literature or Anglo-Saxon Literature belongs to the period from 450 CE to 1050 CE. CE meaning Common Era. So, who were the Anglo-Saxons? Where did they come from? Were they the original inhabitants of England? Well, the Anglo-Saxons were members of the Germanic tribes which had lived in olden times in parts of Sweden, Denmark and northern Germany in the mainland of Europe. These are places located in what is known as the Scandinavian region in northern Europe. Sweden, Denmark and Norway are called the Scandinavian countries. So, the Anglo-Saxons came to England sometime in the 5th century from their original homes in Northern Europe. They ruled over England and Wales until the arrival of the Normans in 1066 or the Norman conquest of England in 1066. So, which literary work is considered to be the earliest and greatest epic of English literature? The earliest and greatest epic of English literature is Beowulf. The spelling is B-E-O-W-U-L-F but the pronunciation is Beowulf. So, Beowulf is English literature's earliest and greatest epic or heroic poem. It is a Scandinavian story, not an English story. It is a Scandinavian story, a story about people who lived long, long ago in what is now Sweden and Denmark. It was written in Old English, but the story is Scandinavian in origin. That means the language that was used to write was of course English, but the story is from Scandinavia. Why is the prologue of Beowulf important? The prologue of the poem or poem is important because it describes Sild, the king of the Spear Danes. The Spear Danes had no king. And one day, a sailorless ship came to port. It carried a baby and many arms and weapons. This child in the boat was Sild. And Sild went on to become a great warrior and leader of the Spear Danes. He had a son called Beowulf, not the Beowulf of our epic. When the boy came of age, Wyrd or fate took away Sild. The next question that you can expect from this particular section of English literature is Who is Rothgar and what did he do? Rothgar was one of Sild's descendants and when he was old he built a great hall called Hurot near the sea. This became the venue for feasting and festivities of the Danes and their king every night. One night, Grendel, a terrifying sea monster, came into the hall from the sea and killed some of the Danish warriors sleeping in the hall. So how long did Grendel's attacks on the Danes continue? It went on for 12 long and terrifying years. So, how did Beowulf, the hero of the epic, hear about Grendel and what did he do about it? Now, what happened was that the fear fearful stories of Grendel's horrifying raids across the sea and they reached the land of Geats. Beowulf, the young warrior, and hero of the epic poem lived with his uncle Hygelac. He was a man of great strength, a powerful swimmer and a very brave warrior. He decided to help the Danes fight Grendel. Beowulf travelled with 14 of his companions to the land of the Danes to kill Grendel. 
So who is Grendel? Grendel of the Eotin or giant race has been described as God's foe and fiend from hell. How did the Danes treat the women of their community? Danish women were treated with honor and respect reserved for their courage amidst difficulties. These women led extremely difficult lives in a very difficult land, in very hostile climate, and they were respected for their courage, their valor, and their resilience. So wives and mothers enjoyed a special place of honor, respect, and adoration in the lives and stories of the Danes. So the next question that comes up, what is the important theme of Beowulf? The most important theme of Beowulf is the belief in the power of word or fate in controlling the lives of human beings. So that is the essential message of Beowulf. Coming back to the story of Beowulf, the questions that you can expect from this section. What happens when Grendel comes to Herod at night? Grendel comes at night, sees the sleeping men and devours one of Beowulf's men. He tries to catch hold of Beowulf, but his claws are caught in the steely grip of Beowulf. The man and the monster fight in the hall. All hell breaks loose in the hall. The sounds of the fearful struggle are terrifying and the Danes outside the hall tremble in fear. Grendel drags Beowulf to the door, but Beowulf manages to break away Grendel's arm. Grendel flees to the sea and dies. What happens after Grendel is killed by Beowulf? After the death of Grendel at the hands of the strong and powerful Beowulf, there are great festivities to celebrate Beowulf's victory over Grendel. At night, there is feasting in the Great Hall and the Danes sleep once again in the Great Hall. But at midnight, another terrifying half-human monster arrives. She is Grendel's mother and she has come to avenge the death of her son. The monster takes away Ashere, Rothgar's trusted friend and advisor. The Danes are shocked and worried. Beowulf comforts them and prepares for yet another fight. The next question that you can expect from this chapter is, the description of Beowulf's journey in pursuit of Grendel's mother. Beowulf follows the path of the new enemy across the fence. The fence are low and marshy land, extremely hostile territory where somebody who is unknowing of the lay of the land can easily get trapped and killed. So Grendel's mother takes away Ashere to a dark, cold and wooded area beside a lake covered with mist. It is a dangerous and gloomy place and death hangs over it. Beowulf descends into this hellish place and is dragged by Grendel's mother into an undersea cave. Monsters attack him from all sides and Grendel's mother tries to penetrate his steel armor with her claws and teeth. Beowulf is tired and then he sees a magic sword. He takes it and strikes at the monster's neck. The ring bones of the monster are shattered and the monster finally falls dead. Beowulf returns to Herod with Grendel's head and the hilt of the sword. What is Beowulf's last adventure? Describe the adventure. Beowulf's last great adventure is his fight with a fire dragon who guards a treasure in a mountain. Beowulf has become old and yet he goes to fight against this dragon who breathes down fire and destruction on the nearby villages. Beowulf goes to the dragon's cave 
and he senses that this will be his last adventure. He knows that death waits for him. But he does not stop. He goes on. Beowulf is helped by his brave companion Wiglaf. The dragon is killed. But in the process, smoke enters Beowulf's lungs and he knows that death is imminent. He asks Wiglaf to enter the mountain cave and Wiglaf returns with gold and ornaments which had been stolen by the fire monster. Beowulf, the old warrior, announces that the gold belongs to his people and he tells his loyal follower as to how he wishes to be buried. There is a lot of symbolism in Beowulf and questions can come about the symbolism in this great epic poem. The creation of the epic Beowulf was probably influenced by the several northern legends or Norse sagas about Beowulf a half-divine hero, and the monster Grendel. Grendel has been interpreted as a bear and also as the malaria of the marshlands. But a symbolic interpretation of Beowulf's three valiant struggles with monsters, three monsters, could refer to man's constant conflicts with natural forces. The dangers of the sea are overcome by building dikes, long walls built in Denmark to prevent the sea from flooding the land. So the sea is conquered when men began sailing on it and finally nature is overcome by the powerful will and strength of human beings. Are there any historical facts associated with Beowulf, this great Anglo-Saxon epic of ancient times? Yes, there are historical facts. What are they? Well, around the year two, sorry, around the year 520, there was a northern chief called Chochilasis, Hygelac of the Beowulf epic. He went on a conquest up the Rhine River in Europe until he was defeated by the Franks. But then they were saved by a super powerful nephew of Hygelac, who was also a great swimmer. So, history and legend blended to create the great epic Beowulf. Mm -hmm.